Hello everybody, this is Joshua McGraw from Doppler Interactive uh, bringing you a tutorial video today. I'm calling it Tidy Tile Mapper, your first five minutes. Now I'm not really sure how long the video is going to be, so it could be five minutes, it could be three, but uh, I think that's a snappy little title. I'm just putting this video together to uh, show you exactly what will happen from the download of your package to you know basic use and maybe explain a little bit how it works uh, just to clear up any confusion you might have or answer any of those burning questions. Uh, excellent. If we look at the screen right now, which you're obviously doing, uh, we've got our import package uh, window up. So I'm just going to go ahead and import Tidy Tile Mapper into this completely clean project, and uh, we'll see how we go there. And here we are. Uh, I've sped that little bit up for you, so you don't have to watch the bar load up. Uh, cool. So let's go ahead and first thing we're going to do: clean scene. We're going to go to Window and Tidy Tile Mapper. Uh, this will bring up our little palette window and all the other excellent tools and uh, do all of our prefab instantiation and such or initialization. I like to grab our window and dock it uh, near the inspector. I think it's a nice place to have it. That's kind of where I designed it to be placed. Excellent. So now step one complete. You've got Tidy Tile Mapper all mounted and looking beautiful. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just create a, a new test map with our uh, default assets. First thing I'm going to do though is change our render settings, uh, make our ambient light white because that grey is ugly. Excellent. So, map creation, it, it sort of goes down the list, uh, the workflow that you want to observe there. We'll name it Tutorial Map. Um, our tile scale here, that's an indication to Tidy Tile Mapper of how big the blocks you intend to put in are. So if in your 3D program of choice you've made like a really big tree or something, you're going to say the base scale is, is this size. It won't scale the blocks, uh, it leaves the blocks uh, the size that they are in the prefab because not every block you use is going to be uniform, you know. Sometimes you want a block that's quite uh, a bit taller than the scale you put in there if you want to have, say, a tree or a house or, or something a little bit bigger. So uh, that's just an indication to the map of what you want the uh, tile size to be. Uh, so this is all pretty good for a demo. Let's go ahead and add that map. Excellent. So you can see in our scene here, uh, it's put down this uh, little sort of transparent white uh, square. That's what we call a chunk. Uh, this is sort of the driving force of Tidy Tile Mapper of how you build maps out. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, in your map tools down here, we've got all our you know, uh, tools going on. Let's pick the paintbrush and I'll pick a swatch. I'm going to go ahead and just pick the empty block for now to show you how it works. And you just give the chunk a big old click. Bang! So you see uh, we've popped these blocks out and now we've got chunks all around it so you can continue to expand the map uh, arbitrarily however you like. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Just click on a few more chunks. And uh, now let's go ahead and maybe maybe we'll pick the other block. We'll start to paint an actual level. So just click on the swatch down here and uh, paint away. Just drag around and sort of do what you like. You'll notice that the blocks automatically orient themselves. and. Uh, That'll do it. That's that's the the start of the process, really. Um, let's go in and have a look at what's really going on here. Now, uh, all of these gray blocks here are working blocks. They're completely core to the tool. Uh, they'll be stripped at uh, at runtime and at publish time, so you don't really have to worry about them being there. Um, it's just the driving force behind the painting experience. They just uh, indicate to the tool this is where you can paint. Um, these are uh, quite essential because when you're painting three-dimensionally or such or on different levels uh, you need to indicate exactly what you're clicking on. Um, so don't delete them! Don't delete them! Um, excellent! So let's go ahead and press play and you'll see what I mean by the tiles being stripped out. Excellent! So you can see there, they're gone. If you actually click there you'll see that the triggers remain. Um, that is just for really runtime speed. Uh, you don't want to have to wait for the whole map to strip every time you press play. Uh, they're just triggers so they won't interfere with your physics behaviors. Uh, however, upon publish, which we're going to look at right now, you can elect to strip them entirely out. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the three types of publishing you can do, and I'll, I'll show you a, a side by side of what it looks like. So we go ahead and select our map right here, and we go to our map management area, and we select a stripping level. Now, this is uh, what we want to remove from the map. So Right now we'll go working blocks only and just publish that bad boy. So what publish will do is uh, create a prefab of that map, strip out the things you don't want, and put it in the folder that it indicates right here. So let's go ahead and go down to that folder. Excellent, so here we've got tutorial map. Let's pop it on the scene and we'll have a look at it. 
So as you can see, it's uh, exactly the same as the the map we're just painting, but it's removed all the working blocks, but left the triggers because we've just chosen to strip the working blocks, nothing else. Let's go ahead and try that again, but this time we're going to strip out the empty triggers. So we'll publish that, it'll come up with an overwrite thing, but we don't want to overwrite that, we want to have a side-by-side. -side. So we'll go no. And it's uh, very tidily appended a 1 to the name uh, in our prefabs area, we'll just pop that there too. Let's see if we can put it next to it so we get a nice side-by-side. -side. Excellent, so let's have a look at the difference between these two maps here. Oh, I'll just move this out of the way so you can actually see. There we go. So you can see this one right here has the triggers. This one does not have any triggers. So let's go ahead and try the uh, the very last stripping level. That's strip all. This is uh, really targeting your mobile uh, releases or anything not using the runtime API. Go ahead and publish that. Again, we went over right. And uh, let's go ahead and bang that map in here. So this time you can see there's no triggers, but also if we go to our inspector, there are no uh, scripts at all. Uh, it's gotten rid of the block, the map chunk scripts, so everything is uh, completely stripped out for your efficiency desires. Uh, so that's really the fundamental of Tidy Tom Apple. Let's go back to our map here so we can uh, you know, have a good sign off. Um, so we've had a look at the, the painting, the map creation process, the publishing, and uh, that's the foundation of the tool. Um, so I hope that's been helpful for you and, uh, and uh, if you've got any questions do remember to hit me up on the forums or on Twitter or on the support email that comes in the readme. Uh, this has been Joshua McGrath from Doppler Interactive bringing you Tidy Tile Mapper, your first five minutes.